Are you conducting your final undergraduate research project or preparing your master's thesis or dissertation? One of the most important decisions when conducting a research project is whether to utilize a qualitative or quantitative research approach. If you have chosen the qualitative research approach, watch this video to understand the whole process. This video is a step-by-step -step guide to the qualitative research process. In this video, we will look at the definition of qualitative research. We will also look at the six main steps in conducting qualitative research which include developing ideas, conducting a literature review, choosing a research design, data collection, data analysis, and dissemination. Let's start with definition. Qualitative research has become one of the most prominent research approaches. Qualitative research adds contextual and human elements to the research process. Qualitative research involves collecting and analyzing non-numerical data such as text, audio, or video to understand the specific groups, opinions, concepts, and experiences. Qualitative research can therefore be used to deeply understand a specific issue. So, what's the first step of the qualitative research process? Step one, coming up with research ideas. The first step in qualitative research is coming up with research ideas. Normally, it will be easier to develop qualitative research ideas than quantitative ones. This is because a small number of participants can be included in qualitative research but might be too small to be statistically significant in quantitative research. For example, 40 participants might be recruited for a qualitative study, while a quantitative study related to the same topic might require at least 100 participants. If accessing many participants is a challenge, consider conducting qualitative research. When conducting qualitative research, the different places you can get research ideas include professional interests, suggested research gaps, and from previous studies, seminars, and workshops. You can also get research ideas from current job settings, professional colleagues, and faculty members. Check out my video on the places to look for a master's thesis topic to understand the different places to look for ideas for a qualitative study. The link is in the description. An example of a qualitative research topic can be exploring the perceptions of happiness in your school. Step two, conducting a literature review. The second step when conducting a qualitative study is developing a literature review. The literature review will make you knowledgeable of the topic of study. After conducting the literature review, you will know the different concepts related to your study and the theoretical approaches previously taken to explore your research topic. A literature review will also motivate your new research by identifying research gaps suggested or observable from previous scholarly studies. The main steps in a literature review include finding keywords related to your topic. Using a thesaurus to get major keyword synonyms can help to retrieve more scholarly sources. Previously, I have done a video on how to retrieve scholarly sources, which I will link in the description, so make sure you check it out. The main process of retrieving scholarly articles includes finding scholarly databases related to your discipline. For example, when researching the topic of happiness in the psychology discipline, we can search for scholarly databases in the psychology discipline on Google. We can then use our library logins for our school to access the different databases. Some databases such as PubMed and Google Scholar are also free to access. After identifying the scholarly databases relevant to your discipline, you will combine the keywords you identified with Boolean operators. Boolean operators are conjunctions such as AND, OR, NOT, and NOT, which are used to combine keywords to get more accurate searches on scholarly databases. After combining keywords using Boolean operators, you will then retrieve the scholarly articles related to your research topic. For example, happiness in our case study. At this stage, you should retrieve as many scholarly articles as possible. After retrieving scholarly articles, the next step will be to import such articles to a reference management tool such as Zotero. A reference management tool will help you to annotate cite and reference all your sources effectively. I have also done a video on how to use Zotero, so make sure you check it out through the link in the description. After going through all the scholarly articles, you will synthesize and combine the different perspectives from scholarly articles to develop your literature review. Eventually, your literature review will identify the major concepts related to your research topic 
and identify the motivation of your new research. Before we move to the third step of qualitative research, I would like to interrupt this video to tell you about my free service. I am offering free consultation for any issue related to qualitative research. All you have to do is to click the link in the description and book a free consultation session. Thank you and let's get back to the video. Step 3. Choosing a research design. There are five common qualitative research approaches which include historical study, phenomenology, grounded theory, ethnography, and case study. Let's first look at historical study. The historical study qualitative approach will be the best choice if your research topic relates to an extensive past examination including events, documents, and people. The main purpose of a historical study is to connect the future and the present based on research conducted in the past. The historical model heavily relies on adequate historical documents and interview sources. The use of primary sources is important when utilizing the historical study approach. Validating data accuracy is also important in the historical study qualitative approach. The next approach to qualitative research is phenomenology. The phenomenological qualitative approach involves a researcher gathering information to explain how individuals experience a certain phenomenon. Phenomenological approach to qualitative research also examines how individuals feel about specific phenomenon. For example, if you set up a study to explore the perception of happiness in your school, this would be a phenomenological study. The phenomenological approach to qualitative study recognizes that there is no single objective reality with every person experiencing life differently. The outcomes of a phenomenological study are derived from the participant's point of view. A researcher might also decide to derive the main things surrounding the phenomena under study. The next approach to qualitative research is the grounded theory. The grounded theory is a common approach to qualitative research. The main purpose of the grounded theory approach is to develop a theory surrounding a social issue. The grounded theory approach seeks to define how people deal with problems and identify the problems in the social scene. The initial research question will be progressively refined and reformed as more information is gathered on a particular topic. In this regard, research participants help to shape the grounded theory. The next approach to qualitative research is ethnography. Ethnography is a qualitative study that involves studying a specific cultural grouping. Researchers utilizing the ethnography study approach will immerse themselves in the given culture they are researching. In ethnographic studies, qualitative data is gathered through interaction with participants from a given culture and observation. When utilizing the ethnography ethnographic study approach, the qualitative researcher will present the information from the perspective of the study participants. The main goal of the ethnographic study is to understand the research participants' culture. The next common qualitative study approach is the case study. The case study approach can be used to examine an institution, community, group, or person. When conducting a case study, a researcher may draw upon multiple data sources such as interviews, documents, and observations. All the participants chosen in a given case study should have a unifying factor such as directly connecting the subject being studied or the research question. For example, a researcher might conduct a case study to investigate the culture of a given organization. In such a scenario, all the research participants will be the members of the organization being studied. After collecting data, the researcher will analyze the data to identify the prominent or common themes. Step 4. Data Collection the fourth main step in the qualitative research process is collecting data. The common data collection methods preferred by qualitative researchers include interviews, surveys also referred to as questionnaires, observation, focus groups, and records also referred to as archival reviews. Let's look at surveys or questionnaires. Surveys or questionnaires are among the most common qualitative data collection approaches. Most qualitative researchers will rely on open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are questions that do not have specific answers, but consider the creative responses of the participants. 
For example, asking a participant in a study what their experience visiting the zoo is, is a good example of an open-ended question. In open-ended questions, every participant will have a different answer to the questions provided. For example, in our case, every research participant will have a different experience visiting the zoo. Interviews. Conducting interviews is also a common approach to collecting qualitative data. Interviews are one-on-one -on -one sessions between a researcher and a participant. Interviews can be conducted in person or online. Compared to administering questionnaires, interviews provide a more personal way for researchers to collect data. Most qualitative researchers prefer interviews because interviews offer a personal touch with research participants. However, interviews can be more time consuming, which is one of their main limitations. Focus groups. Another common method of collecting qualitative data is the use of focus groups. Focus groups include having an open discussion with a group of research participants. Focus groups can include five or more participants who will discuss various topics openly. Most qualitative researchers record audio during focus groups, which are then transcribed. One of the limitations of focus groups is that other participant responses might influence one participant's answer. This is a common occurrence referred to as the halo effect, in which responses provided by the first participant will influence the responses that the rest of the participants provide in a given focus group. Observations. Another approach to collecting qualitative data is through observations. The observation method of collecting qualitative data is important especially in the ethnographic approach to qualitative research. The observation approach to collecting qualitative data allows a researcher to observe participants in their natural environment. For example, a researcher investigating an organization's culture can rely on observation method of data collection. This would involve the researcher observing all the stakeholders in a given organization, including employees, managers, and the executive leadership in their natural work environment. Reviewing records or archives. Reviewing archives or records is also a common approach to qualitative research. This approach is used to collect secondary data. This means that a researcher will focus on data that other people have already collected. For example, audio recordings, videos, images, books, blogs, and any other credible source of information. Reviewing records or archives data collection method can be quite useful when studying a historical topic through the qualitative approach. For example, when conducting a study to determine the reaction of a country to a given event, the reviewing record approach can be used as the main qualitative data collection approach. Most of the data collection methods in qualitative research allow the researcher to collect primary data. Primary data is the data collected directly from the source. For example, if you conduct an interview, you will collect primary data from research participants. The only qualitative data collection method that collects secondary data is the archival review or relying on past records of an event. Secondary data involves reviewing the data that has already been collected by another person. For example, secondary data can include information provided on a government website. Step 5. Data analysis. The fifth step of conducting qualitative research is analyzing the data collected in the data collection phase. There are six most common qualitative data analysis techniques including narrative analysis, qualitative content analysis, discourse analysis, grounded theory, thematic analysis, and interpretative phenomenological analysis, IPA. Let's briefly look at each data collection method. Narrative analysis. The narrative analysis approach to qualitative data analysis includes listening to people telling stories and analyzing their stories. Since every research participant will have a subjective view of the world, listening to their stories and analyzing their narrative can go a long way in collecting in-depth 
qualitative data. One of the main shortcomings of the narrative analysis approach to analyzing qualitative data is that it's time consuming. The issue of research bias is also prevalent in narrative analysis. Qualitative content analysis. Qualitative content analysis is also one of the most common approaches to qualitative data analysis. Content analysis simply means evaluating the patterns within content pieces, such as a collection of historical recordings of political speeches. Applying the content analysis approach, a researcher can identify the frequency with which an idea is shared. For example, a researcher can analyze the frequency of the mention of the word love on Twitter in the month of February and compare it to other months of the year. Content analysis will also involve coming up with patterns to develop deeper interpretations. Content analysis can be time consuming and contribute to losing important details during the analysis process. Discourse analysis. Discourse analysis is another approach to qualitative data analysis. Discourse simply means debate or spoken language. Discourse analysis involves analyzing language such as speech or conversation within its social context. This will include analyzing language within the society or culture and the context in which it takes place. For example, a researcher can conduct a discourse analysis of the conversations about success in a given community. Thematic analysis. Thematic analysis is also a common approach to qualitative data analysis. Thematic analysis includes looking at patterns of meaning in specific data sets, for example, in focus groups, transcripts, and interviews. Thematic analysis includes considering the different aspects of qualitative data and grouping such data according to similarities or themes. Themes will help a researcher to make sense of qualitative data and to derive meaning from such data. For example, a researcher analyzing the popularity of a given product can analyze the qualitative data obtained from customer interviews to identify themes such as exemplary customer support and friendly staff, among others. Interpretative phenomenological analysis. The interpretative phenomenological analysis is also an effective approach to analyzing qualitative data. Interpretative phenomenological analysis, IPA, is used to analyze the personal experiences of research participants concerning a given situation or event. The situation or event is the phenomenon being considered in the IPA or interpretative phenomenological analysis process. The IPA is an important qualitative data analysis approach to analyze the experiences of research participants. For example, a researcher conducting the study of experiences of athletes who in major events might prefer to use the IPA approach to analyze the data they collect. Grounded theory. The grounded theory is a qualitative data analysis method that is used to develop new theories from the data at hand. This is done through revisions and tests. Using the grounded theory approach, a researcher goes into data analysis with an open mind and is guided by the data using previous theories and existing hypotheses. The grounded theory approach to analyzing qualitative data is preferred among qualitative researchers who rely on grounded theory in setting up their research process. Step six, dissemination. The final step in the qualitative research process is disseminating the study results. A researcher can decide to disseminate the results in different formats including written reports that can be published on websites and on scholarly journals. Written reports can also be printed and hard copies provided to the target audiences. Researchers can also disseminate qualitative research results in video, audio, or any other recorded formats. There you have it. These are the six main steps of the qualitative research process. The first step is coming up with ideas. The second step is conducting a literature review. The third step is choosing a research design. The fourth step will be data collection, the fifth step is data analysis, and the sixth and final step is dissemination. Now, one of the most important steps you have to go through in qualitative research is conducting a literature review. When conducting a literature review, you may need sources including scholarly articles. Watch this video on how to retrieve scholarly articles for your research paper to get a head start in your literature review. Thank you.